Hi, everyone. I'm George Jackson, executive producer and host of GovExec TV. Today's five questions are with a trio of digital twins experts from Booz Allen. Here today, Sadal Kreps, digital twins project lead, ma'am. Welcome. Thank you, George. Trishna Lovely, director and digital twins lead. Good to see you. Great to be here. Last but not least, Joanna Guy, partnerships lead and lead technologist. Thanks for being here. Happy to be here, George. So, Trishna, kick us off. Give our audience a little bit of context here. Digital twins, what are they? Why are they so important? How are they changing the landscape? Yeah, so think about digital twins as virtualization of the real world in real time. That's what Booz Allen's digital twin solutions are. They are exact virtual replicas of real world assets. That could be a system, a process, an object that's directly connected to the physical counterpart through data. So it's through these data feeds that you get a real time operating picture across the assets life cycle. This allows you to predict issues, to experiment with improvements, fine tune operations, all with precision and an understanding of real world impacts. So digital twins are already changing the world for our clients by enabling them to address their toughest challenges with velocity, whether that's from a mission focused issue or all the way up to an enterprise wide need. Um, so taking a step back from that, I feel like a good way to really anchor this in a real world example would be through something like commuting. Back in the day to get from point A to point B, you would need a map and it was flat, static, showed you the roads and highways you needed to take. Today, we have technology like Waze that gives you a real time 3D look at the route you're driving on. And that allows you to contextualize data for faster, better decision making. Now take that concept and apply it to the federal government. Except in this case, digital twins are a foundational platform that can run across the defense mission space, whether that's for infrastructure management or national security. You can twin your system and your assets. You can twin your operating environment. You can even twin your warfighters, squads, and battalions to assess core readiness. And this is all within the same platform. So it's because of this, digital twins are enabling our clients to contextualize very, very complex data rapidly for faster, better decision making, which is really accelerating mission outcomes. If I pull one word out of that, Joanna, it's precision, you know, and she mentioned defense, these national security missions. Talk about the precision needed. Why is it a mission imperative for those communities? In defense missions, time itself becomes a weapon and you have to have precise decision making to wield that asymmetric advantage. A digital twin is a cybernetic predictor that enables you to maximize operational efficiency. So let's break that down in the context of logistics and contested logistics, the ability to sustain your force and mobilize assets. The beginning of this supply chain is the organic industrial base. This is where our assets are stored, refurbished, and mobilized. And just one installation in the entire OIB can be huge. Think 40,000 football fields huge. And that alone makes asset mobilization a complex process just in that one point in the ecosystem. Booz Allen's digital twins can speed modernization of the organic industrial base, and on these bases can offer optimizations and efficiencies like route recommendations for asset transport, smart asset tracking, dynamic infrastructure modeling, explosive arc simulation, and making those optimizations to the beginning of the supply chain can shave off hours and days that could make the difference in conflict. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are endless use cases for digital twin technology and defense from predictive maintenance to intelligent wargaming to the application for human performance and assessing core readiness, mm -hmm. orbital defense. Um, the promise of this technology spans domains. Sadal, so we've got a great foundation from Trishna. You know, that term that Joanna used, cybernetic predictor. I mean, amazing stuff. Let's draw this down into like real world 
mm. or use cases for DOD, for the national security community? Where is this happening right now? Where is it working? Yeah, so uh, Booz Allen has seen adoption of digital twins across a wide array of challenges in the DOD. We've built uh, digital twins of hospitals to help identify risks of Legionella, for example, um, digital twins of entire installation energy infrastructure to help identify vulnerabilities uh, for mission resilience. We've built digital twins of coastal water uh, lines and depths to help with uh, training exercise planning. And we've built uh, digital twins of historic facilities to help really optimize mission footprints in those really complex spaces. Uh, whether you're looking at something like a mega construction project on an installation or transport and basing logistics across a theater of operations, digital twins really help identify those performance indicators, they help reduce operational risks, and they really help decision makers make decisions that accelerate their missions. So if I'm working in DOD, I'm working in the national security community, and I want to enhance the precision of my operations for that 40,000 football field installation, but I look at it and I think, man, this is so intimidating. Where do I start here? Where do you advise people to? What are the first few steps that they need to begin undertaking before they can take advantage of digital twins down the road? Yeah, so Booz Allen has really recognized some of the complexities of adopting this new technology. And it, we've worked really hard to create uh, multi-use solutions that um, streamline that process as much as possible by really taking advantage and capitalizing on as much of the technology that the commercial world has to offer. So we start our digital twins with a, a gaming engine platform. And that allows us to use um, interfaces and, and familiar activities for people. So you think uh, SimCity, for example, but for an Air Force base. Uh, you know, this kind of human-centered uh, construct allows for people to sit down at a, at, a, at a keyboard and a mouse and do things that they're already used to doing, mm. right? So that really helps engage users. The other key element is all about connectivity and connecting to existing data sources. So we build our digital twins to integrate with existing tools already being used in the DoD, existing data sources already being leveraged in the DoD, and, and we really streamline that connectivity. Um, and then finally is the ability for that technology to evolve and scale as mission needs change. And so we really built, we really focus our digital twin development on our ability to pull in new technology as it comes about. So right now, for example, we're really focused on building out that analytical AI that takes all of that data and really goes from data to information to really help decision makers optimize and accelerate their missions. I'm gonna pull Joanna on that SimCity example. I'm gonna ask a long-winded question here, but I promise <laughs> like at the end of it, there is an actual question. <laughs> My eight-year-old twins can play SimCity. I, I would assume that there's an accessibility or an ease of use aspect to the digital twins from a technological perspective. But when my kids play SimCity, they don't have to go through books and books of policy and regulation <laughs> that people who work in the government contracting landscape do, is there a, a policy aspect to kind of pressing that easy button? The UI UX is the beauty of commercial technology and we have to deliver that to defense missions. And in fact, the exponential growth trajectory of AI creates an imperative for the US to do so. But you're right, in defense missions, more elegant solutions are required than the average commercial company might consider. Where commercial solutions prioritize profitability and scalability, defense builders and buyers are considering life-threatening, democracy-threatening, economy-threatening, adversarial attack. So you have to build in robust cybersecurity, whether that's zero trust access controls, post-quantum cryptography. Hmm. And in defense, you have to have the authority to operate before you can even begin to implement the best of commercial tech solutions. And policy-wise, there are ways to speed adoption. OTAs and CSOs are great agile contract vehicles. And at Booz Allen, we love to utilize this type of outcomes-based contracting. It allows us to more rapidly prototype, conduct field testing, and work as closely as possible with our end user. And our end user is rarely the average commercial buyer. 
we're building for the soft commander, the intel analyst, the arsenal logistics manager, the F-16 pilot, and beyond. Krishna, you are, I guess I'd say, my futurist here at the table. So I'm going to ask you a futurist-based question. We've talked about this science. It sounds incredibly exciting, but what's state of the art? What do digital twins look like a year, two years, five years down the road? Yeah, that's a great question. I'll focus on the three to five year horizon because really investing in the technology is to predict our clients' needs. Booz Allen is doing that already with unprecedented speed, realism, and cost efficiency. So it's not only possible, but it's also practical to test and to plan effectively and efficiently. So we look at this in three ways. First, we're investing in physical AI. Uh, which is powered by analytics, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and that allows our clients to pursue more agile, innovative ways to achieve mission outcomes at speed and at scale. Second, we work with technology partners that are industry leaders in order to accelerate speed to outcomes for our tech ecosystem and the solutions we provide. And finally, we're hyper-focused on taking innovative private sector solutions and capabilities that we see are going to disrupt the federal technology market. And through our venture capital fund, we are continuing to jumpstart development of new solutions for critical missions, which can range from drone warfare all the way to space domain awareness. So really, in summary, when we look at the future of digital twins, we're in it right now. And Booz Allen is looking at how we can take those critical, complex client missions that they are immersed in every single day and aligning that with game-changing, pun intended, <laughs> technology, so that we can accelerate outcomes for our nation's infrastructure, security, and defense priorities. Talking fascinating stuff. Digital twins with the digital triplets, pun intended. <laughs> From Booz Allen, Sadell Kreps, Trishna Lovely, Joanna Guy, thanks all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. That was today's five questions for GovExec TV. I'm George Jackson. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs>